This is the second part of our discussion on complex logarithm function. So far, we have defined what is multi-valued logarithm function. Okay? So it is basically inverse of exponential function. And uh, it is basically a multi-valued function. And the value is basically uh, log of z is equal to natural log of modulus of z plus iota, the principal argument of z plus 2n pi. Over here, n varies over the set of all integers. And for each integer, we have an output. So there are infinitely outputs of log of z. We also define an associated principal value of the logarithm. So it is a function which is basically a single valued function. Okay, so over here we just take the value of n to be equal to 0 and we get this single output of log of z. So known as the principal value of the logarithm. Now the domain of this function is the set of all non zero complex numbers. Now uh, if we compare uh, log of z and its principal value, then uh, log of z is a multi valued function. And uh, principal value is basically a single valued function. So we cannot define continuity and differentiability for log of z. Okay? Uh, because uh, we define these concepts for single valued functions. So that's why from now on we will discuss only uh, the principal value of the logarithm. And we will focus on what are going to be the continuity property. Is it going to be continuous at some point? And at what points it is going to be continuous? and the differentiability at what points it is going to be differentiable and uh, how to find the derivative of this uh, principal value of the logarithm. Now before uh, moving on uh, let's have a uh, look at very basic uh, uh, idea. Okay, So remember when we define the complex versions of the elementary real valued functions then one of the basic criteria that we imposed that when we restrict these complex valued functions to the real numbers then we should get exactly the same real versions of the real valued functions. So in this case is it true uh, when we restrict this uh, principal log to um, uh, when we restrict this z to set of real numbers then this principal log becomes the natural log of x or not and the answer in this case is yes so this criteria is satisfied for this function and the argument is basically very simple if we take z to be equal to x plus iota y and over here x is basically a positive uh, real number because uh, we are going to define uh, a natural log on this real number so x should be a positive number so z is equal to x plus iota y for this we we know that the principal log is equal to natural log of modulus of z plus iota uh, principal argument of z Okay. Now, uh, for this, uh, we have uh, if z is equal to x plus iota 0, then we get, okay, so natural log of uh, uh, mod of x plus uh, principal argument of x. Now, remember, we impose the condition that x is greater than 0. It is a positive number. So, if x is a positive number, uh, then the principal argument is going to be equal to 0. And we get the following expression, uh, princip uh, principal log of x is equal to natural log of x plus 0. So, when restricted to the set of real numbers, this principal log ex is exactly the same as the natural log. Okay. Now, moving on to the continuity of uh, principal log. Okay. So, uh, in this module, we will focus on the continuity and in the next module, we will see the differentiability of uh, principal log. Now, uh, let's have a uh, look at uh, somehow the output of the principal log. Okay, so the output is given over here and uh, uh, the domain is basically set of all non-zero complex numbers and the output is going to be one sheet of complex numbers. So this sheet is basically this fundamental period strip. So this fundamental period strip, which is an infinite strip, is going to be uh, the image values of this principal log. Okay, now if we compare this to uh, the log of z and the output is basically uh, log of modulus of z. So this is the same as in the case of the principal value of log. So this part is the same but where is the difference? So once again this part is the same but this part is different. Okay. So when we take n is equal to 0 we have this principal log and the output is one infinite strip, one infinite sheet of complex numbers in the w plane. Okay. Uh, and if we take n is equal to 1, 
then we are going to get another infinite strip and when we take n is equal to 2 we are going to get another infinite strip so in other words uh, the situation is going to be something like that so we have sheets for each and every value of n for n is equal to 0 we have one sheet for n is equal to 1 we have another sheet for n is equal to minus 1 we have another sheet and up to so on so we are getting infinitely many sheets and uh, we can imagine them as we can see on the screen like this okay so they are infinitely many sheets uh, okay so stacked like this okay so let's say this is the sheet for n is equal to 0 this is the sheet for n is equal to 1 and this is the sheet for n is equal to minus 1 okay okay so n is equal to minus 1 okay now the point is what is going to happen at the intersection of these sheets okay so uh, this is going to be our point of concern okay so in general if we have a multi-valued function okay w is equal to f of z is a multi-valued function uh, then a branch of f is any single valued function f naught that is continuous in some domain except perhaps at the boundary okay so for example if we go back to our uh, situation now we have a multi-valued function because uh, uh, this is this situation this situation is depicting different sheets uh, which is the output of a logarithm function then a branch of a logarithm function is any single valued function that is continuous in some domain okay so for example if we want to uh, consider one branch then it is going to be for example this sheet so this is one branch and we can see that it is continuous okay so that's why it satisfies the criteria of one branch this is going to be the second branch this is going to be the third branch and at the boundary so there is a, once again the point is what is happening at the boundary okay so at the boundary there is a kind of a problem and we will see that what is that problem in a moment okay so we have infinite branches one for each integer value of n okay and let's call them f0 f1 f2 f minus 1 f minus 2 and up to so on so these are the branches of this uh, logarithm function okay now let's see what is uh, going to happen uh, at the intersection so this is basically the intersection okay so this is basically the intersection of these sheets so this is one sheet and uh, it is going to be connected to another sheet okay so if we just uh, consider one sheet so it is continuous but at the boundary there is a problem okay so it is now connecting to another sheet but at the boundary in fact this sheet is not continuous okay so let's have a look at this uh, again okay so this is just one sheet we can have a look but uh, if we change the angle and we see okay so now this sheet is connected to another sheet and there is a kind of gap in the values of uh, one sheet okay so due to this gap we can say that this one sheet for example this purple sheet on the top is not continuous at this uh, joining point where one sheet is kind of joining to the other sheet okay so so in fact we can say that one sheet okay so corresponds to another sheet at the points okay so in fact the principal value of the logarithm correspond to just one branch that is f naught now we can say that the function this principal value is discontinuous at the points of negative real axis because uh, that's where uh, the sheets are kind of joining so one sheet is joining the other sheet at this negative real axis so that's why uh, we can say that uh, this principal uh, value of the logarithm is not continuous on the negative real axis so in this module we discussed uh, at what points uh, the principal value of the logarithm is a continuous function and it is continuous at each and every point except at the negative real axis in the next module we will discuss the differentiability of a principal logarithm function